intelligencesquared.com. Please welcome Grayson Perry, Turner Prize winning artist and who has a wonderful exhibition on at the moment, the British Museum, which I very much recommend. Ah, hello. Um, now, I stand before you here, a man in a dress. A man in a dress delivering a short talk. A man in a dress delivering a short talk on religious matters. Now, there's nothing unusual in that. It happens every day in churches, <laughs> holy buildings all around the world. Every day. And I start with that observation because religious practices often seem very bizarre compared to ordinary life. Yet we accept them because they have this long history and, very importantly, quite obscure origins. You know, there's no internet then. We can't look up on the Google page of Jesus or the, um, the, uh, his Facebook page and check out what he was really doing. And many, if many familiar aspects of religion were introduced today, particularly if they were presented as the idea of an individual, they would be, appear very strange or arrogant, easy to mock. I mean, the comedian Lenny Bruce said, if Jesus had been executed today, Christians would be walking around with a little model electric chair hanging from their necks. <laughs> and we accept, we, we, we accept the strange rituals of religion because they are ancient and because people who thought them out are obscured in the mist of time. This evening I play, also, I want to be annoyingly understanding because though I'm an atheist and a supporter of the motion, I'm very open to be persuaded. If I believe in anything, it is that you should hold your beliefs lightly. Being obsessed with winning the argument and being right is one of the unfortunate traits often shared by fundamentalists and believers. I'm open to be persuaded. I aspire to be flexible. I fail, usually. My, so my psychotherapist's wife tells me that being flexible is one of the main constituents of sanity. So I leave it up to Anne and Anthony to, to try and persuade me. At a lecture I was giving recently, I, were, I was asked if I believed in God, and I said no. And a large section of the audience burst into applause and cheered. And I was a bit shocked. It was as if I had sort of like, you know, given diplomatic support to the home football team or something. <laughs> and for a moment, my distaste for the mob almost trumped my scepticism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Atheists often cite science to attack religion. But pitting science versus religion, as someone once said, is like a tiger fighting a shark. They will both win on their home territory. Religion did not happen just to wind up those sad, excessively logical, often male, belligerent academics. I mean, I was surprised tonight that the organisation, we, we haven't got one of those people sitting opposite us. But I think what happened was Christopher Hitchens, when he got up to Kevin, he sort of managed to send a message back to the others saying, the game's up, lads. <laughs> but a religion, on a more serious note, religion, I think, evolved out of a very human need. As an artist, I can understand the very creative and brilliant idea that God is. Spontaneously and originally, just, just to satisfy, well, not just to satisfy, it came to satisfy the kind of pre-verbal needs of early humans. And un the unconscious is extremely resourceful. Just as children today instinctively play out their fears and hopes through the metaphors of their games, so God was a great comfort in the frightening, mysterious world to adults. Our brains do not cope easily with the unknown. We have what Steven Pinker calls the baloney generator. Our unconscious is bursting to supply us with a believable answer to things we don't really understand or can know about. So it comes up with a, with a kind of idea, rationalise it, and God is, a, is an excellent example of that. The idea of God was gradually post-rationalised in service of very human reasons. I mean, there's whole libraries for theology to support the, the things that people want to do in the name of God over the millennia. And the danger of God as a voice unacknowledged as a human construct is that it is used to put forward the agenda of those in power who say they have a direct line to him. It's this bit like those words like normal and natural. They're cloaks in which to, hold our own, to hide our prejudices and our biases. It's like, if you're an angry person, you tend to have an angry God. And if your God doesn't like homosexuals, then, you know, just because you don't like homosexuals. Now, I don't think I believe in God. I don't believe in God principally, I think, because I come from a non-religious family. I have no nice emotional experiences or family rituals of attendance and faith to implant and sustain my belief. 
I did go to a Church of England school, and it's given me knowledge of the most famous Bible stories, of which I'm very grateful because it's meant that I, have, I can enjoy religious art that much more. If I'm to recount my peak aesthetic experiences in the last decade, most of them will be fun in front of religious art whether it's in a stave church in Norway, a Bruegel in Vienna, procession in Lourdes, Schartz Cathedral, the Isenheim altarpiece, the wondrous Rococo Wieskirche in Bavaria. These are places that brought me to tears, aesthetically. And I don't think God was involved. I would say that many things that shape my life as an artist come from religion. The very way that we look at art comes from God. We go to a special building, we make pilgrimage to that special building, we stare at the special thing. Of course, I'm often in there having a glass of wine with my fellow congregants, and there's usually a little bit, there's usually a bit of smoked salmon there on top of the bit of bread. <laughs> but I see religion as a beautiful multimedia poem. I mean, the, Philip Larkin said in, in his poem, Obeyed, he called religion that vast, moth-eaten musical brocade created to pretend we never die. Today, especially here in sceptical Britain, many of us don't believe in the magic man with beard or flying messengers, but we do have a lot of strange beliefs. I mean, you've only got to watch an episode of Deal or No Deal. <laughs> I feel we have a need for meaning and ritual. Ceremony, participation, a set of habits, not purely about satisfying our selfish, individualistic, destructive, addictive instincts, but perhaps a structure to nurture more benign behaviour. I mean, one of my favourite quotes comes from one of Anthony's fellow Benedictine monks, Father Christopher Jameson, he said that people often come up to him and they say, oh, I'm not religious, but I've got a very strong spiritual side. And he would reply, I'm not spiritual, but I've got a very strong religious side. <laughs> and spirituality is a word often used, especially in this area of London, um, I've got to say. Um, it sets my teeth on edge, and it seems to trip off the tongue of those who subscribe to a very wishy-washy belief system, in that they're flooded in to fill the God-shaped hole in our society. And what I admire about a lot of religions is the clarity of its message and its narratives. There's no vague spirits often. You've got a definite bloke, there's a picture of him up there, and there's a definite time you've got to look at him, and like Alan was saying, all these calendars and things, it's the, it's the, it's the surety of it. It's not wishy-washy. That's what I admire about it. I mean, I've been on a couple of pilgrimages on my bike to famous religious sites, have cycled across Europe to them, and of course, that hard journey makes, when you get there, that is a very, it makes it much more impressive when you get to Santiago or, or Lourdes if you've, if you've struggled to get there in the heat. But of course, that's why, I, you know, that's, it's not a religious experience that I get there, it's because I struggled to get there, and I'm really glad to get there. And I could e easily side with many religious people about the, the, moral, the moral and ethical failings that we see in society, in politics, business, and the media. Yet I cannot share their superstitions. But what I'm envious about as an artist, I'm often envious about religious artists, is that they have at the heart this very definite, good, central idea. It's a good idea, God, Jesus, Buddha, or whatever it is. Because you can hang all the other lovely stuff on it. And of course, for an atheist now, like Alan, to suggest an alternative, it's very easy to mock. Because he's up against ideas that were thought up in the mists of time. And so we can pretend that they've come from God because we don't know that Alain de Botton 2,000 years ago said, oh, it'd be a good idea if we broke bread and wine now, wouldn't it? So religious rituals and art you know, were not handed down for heaven. They were conjured up by humans, but to meet a real need that we still have today. And I think atheists could form their own religion, one that has lovely buildings, emotional support, beautiful art, ethical and moral guidance. But it does, not happen, it does not have to happen overnight. You know, it's something that I think that could happen organically. It's a work in progress. Thank you. Anne and Anthony, your chance now to repost. Uh, yes, I'd like to know, please, where you get smoked salmon with communion. No, I was talking about the art gallery and the art, the private oh. views in the art world. You know, they're the nearest we have to a communion, I How, suppose. We're oh, all standing around with our glasses. I, was I, thought you said I, was I thought you meant you'd visited a church where you get wine and then <laughs> little bits, little canopies on your. No, table. no, the art world's full of bad canopies. <laughs> but we do. We drink more than a glass, though. That's the problem, or even uh, a sip. Uh, Grayson, you said you read, open to being convinced. Yeah, yeah, I think I, 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 yeah. I, I give lip service to that idea anyway. So what I, want to, <laughs> what I want to ask you is what would convince you? Huh? 
What would convince you? Well, that's why I said that I don't think I'm a believer because I didn't grow up with religion. And I think that the principal component of belief is emotion. That's why people are so defensive around it, is because there's no hard evidence. You can't say, oh, there's God in the light. If I said, what, people ask me what I believe in, I say gravity, because I can go like that, and it's all over. You know what I mean? So, um, so the principal component of belief is, is emotion, and that emotion accretes through a person's lifetime and experience, and it comes from, often from their childhood. I think so, more often than not. I mean, they, we do hear about born-agains, but they have a very odd idea of religion, don't they? So... So then you're not really open to being convinced, are you? Because your emotions have been formed already. You're exactly. Not, you're that's, not what I, that's why I say it in a way. I'm, I, I, think, you know, I think you're dead right. I think that because I didn't grow up in a religious household and I don't have that, that experience and it wasn't nurtured in me, I don't think I would ever be convinced because unless God pops down in front of me and says, Grey, you know, and if he did, And if he did, what would you do then? I think I probably first thought would be, God, you know, I've been on the source again. Because I think a lot of things that people... I mean, I've, I've taken drugs. I've had hallucinations. Yeah. You know, and I, and even, and I think that, you know, so I, 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 I don't think... It would take a, I would take a lot of convincing. I'd, you know... <laughs> <laughs> it's just He'd have to be pretty spectacular. Right. I mean, he has done some pretty spectacular things. It's just that Jesus himself said, you know... If people don't want to believe, coming back from the dead is not going to convince them. Obviously. Well, I don't know, anyway, you know, yeah, I haven't got it. When I see it in front of me, anyway, I don't want to get into an argument about whether I believe or not. Because so, I thought the motion was that uh, we don't need the belief in God for religion to be a good thing. Right. Now, I was just intrigued by your saying you were willing to be convinced. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, I, I, it doesn't I think really that... sound as if you are. I no, I, like I said, I give that idea lip service because I think it's a very healthy thing to be flexible. Can, can and occasionally, I... occasionally my wife will challenge me about various things and I, and I have to you know, sullenly agree with her and, I've, we... and I've moved on in the world. Yeah, right. yeah, but yeah, she's yeah, not yeah. God. Sorry. Yeah. What you're really yeah. saying is good to look flexible. On the no, outside. no, I think yeah, I am yeah, quite yeah, flexible. Yeah. There, are, there are a lot of things you've said, Grace, which I find I want to comment on. But just out of interest, you seem to have disagreed with Alain about art. He says religious art is wonderful. You say it's crap. No, I said modern that. religious art is crap. Yeah, but it isn't. What makes you say that? Because all if of us... If it's perfect... Whenever I, I, yeah, I, I, there's I, a desultory I, corner in every cathedral where the local women's guild have done their embroideries <laughs> of the Stations of the Cross. <laughs> or some spiritual bloke has laid a few pieces of kind of wood or concrete but in a kind of... that's not art. That's not art. If I may say so, your own interesting contribution to beauty is something that people might not find attractive either. But the point about art, according to Anna, is to draw people into religion. Is so it? whether it's hideous or not, it seems that art that's it's almost used. irrelevant. Art when it's used. It's a question. Yeah, yeah. Thing, not that yeah. They know, but they've disagreed with art. each other. Art, if art is specifically religious, you know, that, that propaganda thing might be its function. It doesn't make it good art, though. You I know, think it's very offensive, and Alain doesn't want to be, perhaps you do, but I think Women's Institute art is probably the height of the most glorious art we have in England at the moment. So I'm deeply offended by that. All that, Grayson. 